take some, I got a light for the shadow engine. If you see that. Well, actually, no, actually, the axle's still left in there. That's okay, though. That's good. It's hard to see when it's on the thing, but the axle with that part still in there, that's okay. Um, of course, all this is axle grease. You can see where it twisted it and popped it. The ball joint itself looks like it came right out of the. It broke. Yeah. That almost looks like. Can it impact do this, Jay? It could have, but what most likely happened is the ball joint was bad socket wore out and it just popped out. So if you had hit a bump or something like that, yeah, and it, and, uh, it jostled it enough, it just jumps out of the joint. And that's what happened. Oh, right. It happened to a couple of my friends. So it, it's common. Okay. For lack of a better, a lot of the Alrighty. That's exactly why when it pops out, pushes back and then what the thing is. Some cases it comes forward, but it depends on what's going on at the time. This car has been towed three times. I'm getting rid of it once I get it fixed. <laughs> it's haunted. What's up, guys? You saw that disaster area. That car has been in the shop not once, not two, but three times. And that is the car that I paid $6,800 for. Uh, the first issue, buying cheap cars for a higher car is a recipe for disaster. The last thing you want to have is what, like, I classify 70% of the renters on hire car are good, decent people who will rent your car, drive it, and not really do anything to it. And when they're done with it, they'll bring it back. And the 30%, you know what I think of that. So it is really bad when one of the members of the 70% have your car and it breaks down. And this happened not once, but twice. Two long-term renters had this car, and the first time, the starter died. And then the second time, this guy, he was, he, he was humping. He was doing Uber, and the ball joint just broke. Um, and he, actually, he ran another car for me, thankfully. But here's what everyone will tell you, and I see it in the comments. Put your buckets, put your garbage cars on the hire car. I feel that is the wrong thing to do. And if after all of these crazy stories, you want to become um, a member of Hire Car, go below. I have an affiliate link. And if you sign up, I get a little cheddar and you get a little perk. So why do I feel that buying cheap cars for Hire Car is a bad thing to do? I'm seeing in the comments, four thousand dollar car um you know and that's the most you should spend and here's what i'm going through i, I bought five what well, i thought cheap cars about five cars from this dealership for forty one thousand dollars and i thought i even did a video talking about it was a good week i bought these cars at the right price and this car which was part of that was five cars has been in the shop it's currently in the shop three times uh, I had a Camry where the trunk would just randomly open up. And then um, I had another car where the bumper was put on with a zip tie. Um, so four out of those five cars have been issue Latin. And I'm going to move because essentially, you know, I had some assumptions, right? I was assuming that I was going to buy cars in the $7,000 range and put them on the hire car because if I can rent them out for 39 bucks a day, I can get them paid off in about seven, eight months, right? And I am totally, totally rethinking that because I've had some massive repairs on some cars. And when you add the repair cost to the cost of the car, I would have been better off spending that money up front on a better vehicle than to go with these cheaper vehicles because these cheaper vehicles have issues. And essentially because I am the only one on hire car that's putting the type of vehicles that I'm putting on hire car, I've checked. No one in the nation is doing this. You might have someone that might have one BMW, but you're not going to have anyone like I have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven BM, eight, nine. I have nine BMWs out of my 24 car fleet. And I have, because essentially when I started this, I wanted to put good vehicles on there that were dependable so people can make money. So I was trying, you know, my first thought was the Acras and I was spending between 10 and 15,000. And none of those Acras I spent that money on, I've had a problem with, not a one. And they were lower mileage, um, better cars. They had Bluetooth, the charging sockets worked. And essentially today I looked at three BMWs and because of stuff I've learned in the last 11 weeks, I just passed on them because one car was a 2007. It had an aftermarket exhaust. It was tuned, I could tell because how fast it was, but it was filthy. It was like, there was oil on the headliner. There was oil on, there was, it, was, it was filthy. It was filthy and I was just sitting there like, who had this car? And once again, I am starting to listen to that little voice that little voice in me that's like, don't buy this car. And then the one, the first one I drove that I really liked, it had the red service engine indicator on, which, which means that it's gonna need a service. That's gonna be a thousand, eighteen hundred bucks right there, right off the riff. And this car was, I could have rolled out of there for about 9,300 bucks on that car, taxes included, because I bought other cars from this dealer. But I passed on that one. And I passed on the second one in the car that I really wanted, which was a 2011, it had a deposit on it. And this is something I'm consistently seeing in the marketplace. The better cars, people are ponying up the money for the better cars. And I am moving my target to 10 to 15,000 because essentially what I'm getting ready to do is I got a Camry that was wrecked. I'm gonna take an L on that one. Uh, that Camry cost 8,100 bucks. I've made almost $2,000 from it. I'm just going to trip. It's wrecked. The check engine lights on. Uh, I'm not going to fix any of that because fixing that's going to cost me like 2000 to hopefully sell it for like six. So I'm going to spend two, which will put me back at four. Actually that will turn in an $8,000 car, $8,000 car to a $10,000 car. And I'm just going to let it go, take the L and get rid of it. And this is something else that happened for everyone who's like, put the cheap parts on the hire car, put the buckets on the hire car. I have someone that's in the Camry and the Camry's a little rough. It's a little rough. And she emailed me today. She wants the Acura TL. And, you know, we, we couldn't agree on price because I just put $2,000 in this car. And, you know, I was going to do like 39 bucks. And she's like, no, no, no. And she says, no more rough cars. She doesn't like the Camry. And what I've been getting over and over and over again is I've got two, two 2011 Camrys and I got a gray one and a blue one. The gray one and the blue one I'm getting rid of because they're rough. And uh, this Acura TL that's in the shop with the ball joint, I'm getting rid of that one. And if I take an L on these cars, that so be it, because essentially I'm developing a reputation and I want a reputation for putting quality cars on the platform because um, there's a lot of garbage on hire car. A guy who tried to rent a BMW from me, he had already rented a car, rented a car from hire car. You can only rent one car at one time at, from hire car. You cannot rent two. He was trying to rent two and this car, the front, in was crushed. It, it was clearly in a little accident. And that's what he rented. And that's what a lot of people are putting on hire car. And I'm here to tell you, I spent $18,000 on the BMW X5 last week. And I got it on hire car for 125 bucks. I bought it Thursday. I had the GPS put into it Friday. It rented out Saturday. And what I'm finding is it's a delicate art between pricing and positioning and stuff, but I'm getting rid of all my buckets, all my rough cars because nothing but problems, nothing but issues. And once again, I'm already spending the money because, you know, I'm sitting there thinking I can get me a cheap car 
And once you start factoring in the repairs, and you know, I keep hearing this stuff about the BMWs, the maintenance cost, the maintenance cost. I got an Acura back today that I spent $2,000. Had to have two struts, and this was routine maintenance. It had to have two new struts. It had to have a tune-up, a service of the engine, and new tires and rear brakes, and they threw in the rear brakes for free because I've become a frequent customer because I've literally had three, I've been to that shop four times. So they're, they're getting to know me. And when you factor in the potential repairs, like the cars, the BMWs, I look, I already knew the first one that I drew was gonna need a service. Once again, 1,000, 1,800 right off the top. And it had some other lights and it was gonna need headlights and stuff. And my little spotty sense was like, no, 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 don't do it. Yeah, the price is right, but you're gonna to have to put probably two to $3,000 into this car after you buy it, which is gonna turn this $8,000 car into an $11,000 car in terms of cost that was put into it. So I am gonna to move toward quality. Once again, all of my problem cars, all of my garbage cars, all of my cars with issues, I'm getting rid of them because uh, the, there's a hit list. I have a Mini that they're having a hard time fixing. That Mini's gone. I have a Range Rover, a 2008. It doesn't rent well. That's gone. The TL's gone. And tomorrow the Camry might be gone because I'm getting rid of, because I want my fleet to be quality. I want my fleet to be good cars. I want my fleet to be not issue Latin cars because essentially uh, I have some cars. I'm not going to put the GPS kill switch on because I don't have problems with these cars. When people are not, when they're finished with them, they just bring them back. I don't have these issues with them. But any new BMW I put on the platform or a nicer Acura or maybe another SUV, GPS kill switch is definitely going into it. So what I've learned is, and you know, you should consider this because if you go below, sign my affiliate link and start putting cars on there, you should think from the position of who's going to be driving your car. And this is going to be, you know, because I've got some guys who are hustlers. I got some guys. I got a guy who does DoorDash. He does 10 to 12 hours a day, five days a week. He be hustling and he makes like five to seven thousand a month because he be on it. And I got another guy. He guy that the TL broke on. He says, I'm making three, 300, 400 bucks a day doing Uber. So essentially for my customers who are hustling, who really need a dependable car, it is my job to provide them with a dependable car not garbage or, you know, cause like I said, you know, when I got into this business, I had a whole bunch of assumptions, right? And I'm, these assumptions are being exposed for being fraudulent because I had a lady from Chicago call me about one of my Range Rovers. So yes, hire cars, bread and butter is Uber drivers, door drafts drivers. That's their bread and butter. But guess what? Doing this rental car shortage, you have a lot of regular people who don't do Uber and DoorDash. They're flocking to hire car. And they're renting cars from hire car. The girl who rented my BMW, she is an Uber driver, but she had a function this weekend and she wanted to style and profile, so she rented the X5. So there are opportunities. I had someone and I didn't do it because I was scared who a week rent a week long rental for the Mercedes and it was like 800 bucks, right? And I got the Mercedes for 150 on there. And I didn't do it because once again, I've been having problems with my nicer cars on higher cars. So I didn't do it and I rejected that one. But in the future, if someone hits me up with a week long rental like that again, I would, I would take it and I would just snooze it on higher car. I would do, snooze it on Turo. I would definitely do that because I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. And once again, many of you, and uh, there's someone who's doing the same business, um, I would check up on that, because they say it's a week. I wouldn't be surprised if it takes them two weeks to get to you. And for me, you know, for me, 
I'd rather have a service where I can just literally drop my car off that morning and my GPS kit will be in there that afternoon. I would pay extra for that because time is money. Because now that I'm getting a little smarter, I'm buying cars and they're renting out instantly. When I first bought these cars, they just kind of sat in my yard for weeks. And now I'm, I'm figuring out what rents, what doesn't rent. Going back to the lady who has the Camry and she actually said, I don't like the way that it drives. And you know, a Camry is plain, bang, plain Jane, bare bones, point A to point B transportation. And I'm creating an ethos with Mac Daddy Autos where I'm gonna provide, you know, um, supreme service, well-maintained cars. Like I don't buy BMW 328s. I can get a 328, but the 328s are not as zippy as the 335s. They're nowhere near as zippy. And there's only like, they only have like um, 65 more horses, but they're way zippier. And um, so I'm not gonna buy any 328s. I'm not gonna buy any 528s. Um, I buy 530s, 535s, 540s, 545s, and 550s. There's a reason that I buy these cars because um, I was, I had to have a car, had the air conditioning reconditioned and that blows cold air. And I was driving this car and it was a 2006 and I was just like, this is really a nice car. So, and that car I rent out for $49 a day and you have people out there renting Corollas, um, Kias and all this other stuff for the same money. So you could be in the Kia for $49 a day or you could be in the BMW. What you gonna pick? What you gonna do? So as I go down this path, like I said, you know, that video where I talked about like all these cheap cars, they ain't been nothing but problems, man. Nothing but problems. And I'm like, I'm not doing that again. I'm, I'm taking L's right now. The baby's pooping all over itself, but I'm learning because now I have a methodology where I know if I buy a certain type of car. And another reason I didn't buy the BMW is the black one, which was dirty, it had the wrong rims. I've noticed that cars with nicer rims, they, they just go, they just go. The Range Rover, the reason I bought the Range Rover was because of those black rims. And that car, it stays out. I've got a long-term renter in it right now. So essentially, and you know, because I was trying to go against my spotty sense, right? I was like, well, I can order some rims. And I was like, okay, this car is gonna cost you 8,500. Then you throw out, you, you drop a thousand bucks for some rims and tires. Now we're up to 9,500 and then it's still dirty. And then let's say, and I even thought about, you know, having a professional detail, clean it up. And I'm like, okay, but it's a 2006. So I'm becoming very sensitive to what I buy because this is one of the issues when the car is too old or it has too many miles, I can't put it on Turo. And essentially the Mercedes is on Turo, the X5 is on Turo, and the next BMW I'm gonna buy is gonna fit the Turo parameters and I'm gonna put it on Turo and I'm just snooze it because essentially you could put it on Turo as long as this mile is under that 130. If it crosses 130 while it's on the platform, that's fine. That, you know, that, that's not a problem. So rethink your strategy of buying buckets and cheap cars and all this other stuff. Because once again, this is real business, real activity in real time. And I'm telling you what I have found out in these 11 short weeks that buying cheap cars for a hired car is not the winning ticket. Now, if you wanted to buy a brand new Corolla or a brand new Camry, that may work, but used, no, 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 no. And I see there are some people who have got some 2021 Priuses, uh, Camrys and Hondas, and they're renting them at a really good rate and that's a really dependable car. So I'm going to move it where I'm gonna try to stay 2010, 2011, and there's a reason why. I want to sell these cars in two years, right? So if I get a car that already has 160,000 miles in two years, 
it's going to have 200k that's going to be a really hard car to sell and they're not going to be able to sell it for that much some of these bmws i could probably sell them for five and you know still make a little money but essentially if i get a car that only has 90,000 miles and then it gets 50,000 miles in this two year per time frame then i can sell that car for a lot more and it won't be as beat up and it won't be and another thing and this is somebody putting this in the comments and i think it's a really good idea that for my long-term rentals i'm going to have not weekly inspections but bi-weekly inspections every two weeks you got to bring the car and let us look at it. This is going to head off because this is something that I've seen over and over again. When a check engine light comes on or something like they don't tell me. And essentially, most of the times they don't tell me it's because they're late and they don't want to turn the car back in. So they will run your car into the ground. So we're going to start having biweekly checkups for long term rentals and other things because that's going to head off. We, we will see like if it needs an oil change or if it needs uh a tune-up or something like that because i have no problem doing that and then you know once again like i really thought i was going to have to put the kill switch on this girl in the x5 but i communicated with her she brought it back and the car's back the car wasn't wrecked there was no check engine lights there was nothing she just drove it really 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 fast i mean i got her i got the speed alert she was doing 108 108 she was really putting her little foot because she, she was a little girl and I think she had like a size six and she was pressing that size six, six on that accelerator like, Ugh! but be really, really careful because here's the issue that you're going to have with cheap cars. First of all, you're going to have an incredibly long search for a cheap car that can deal with the constant rigors of being rented out. That's the first thing. It's going to be hard. And the second thing, you know, you may find one here or one there, and it's going to take you weeks to find this car. If you're like me and you're trying to scale up and build a fleet, a fleet very quickly, that ain't going to work. That's just not going to work because I, I get in the comments, am I buying my cars at auction? No, I'm not. I don't have my dealer's license. I'm not buying them at auction. I am going to dealers, and I'm going to tell you one of the reasons I'm going to dealers. There's what I've known to be some good dealers and some bad dealers. I have a list of a few good dealers I will buy again, I will buy cars again from, and I have a list of dealers I will never buy cars again from. Uh, one, one guy who's actually my friend of mine, I bought a car from him, it needed brakes, he fixed the brakes, he put new brakes on it, and it was ready the next day. So I will continue to buy from dealers until I get my um, dealer's license. And here's the thing, when I get my dealer's license, Guess what? I'm going to have to be even more rigorous because once I get the car from the dealer's license and in the state of Georgia, typically when you are a dealer and you buy your car from an auction, because I've seen it, all the dealers I've been buying for, they have the titles. So they got the title when they bought the car at auction. So essentially, once I get to where I have my dealer's license, I will be able to take that title to the DMV and get my tag the next day. And once again, we're going to have a formal intake process. We're going to buy the car and we're going to take it to my Asian mechanic or we're going to take it to my European mechanic, have them go over it, tell me what's wrong with it, what does it need, and instantly do all that stuff and just put that on the cost of the car. Because I've been lucky that, you know, the first person that the Acura TL broke down on, she didn't rent for me again. But the second dude, he's like, you know, stuff happens and he rented for me and he rented a more expensive car. So rethink your whole thought process on these cheap cars because i'm here to tell you that higher car there's a lot of opportunity on the higher car there's just there's more than uber lyft doordash and uh uber east drivers on there there are average folk who are looking to rent a car for a few days where their car is in the shop and they will pay more money they will pay more money um i could have rented a car for 150 dollars a day for a week on a higher car. Let me say that again. I could have rented a car for a week for $150 a day on higher car. And once again, the, the BMW is on Turo and it's on higher car. Where did it go first? It went out on higher car. And I have a feeling 
that it's going to rent out again on higher car before it rents out on Toro because essentially right now people I feel that there's a lot of BMWs on Toro and that's why the price because essentially they recommended that I price this car at 55 bucks a day and I know there's a dude on higher car on Toro who has a 2011 Porsche Cayenne with a um, six cylinder, not an eight cylinder. This BMW has been tuned. It has an aftermarket exhaust. It's been lowered. It's been tricked out. So I'm not renting. I'm like, you know, I'll just sit on it. I'm not renting it out for 55 bucks a day when I know I can, you know, I honestly, I could probably bring it down to 70 bucks a day on hire car and get that all day long, but I'm not going to do that because I'm being really judicious and careful with who I rent this car out to because of the suspension. The suspension ain't no joke. You know, if you're on the highway and you're flowing, that's cool. But if you're in the city of Atlanta, oh my God. When I went over this morning to, I mean, the city of Atlanta, the roads are terrible. They're absolutely terrible. And, um, I was on Northside Drive and I hit a pothole and man, good thing my mouth was open. I think I would have chipped a tooth. And I was just sitting there like, these roads are terrible. They're just terrible. But once again, rethink your whole process about putting cheap cars on hire car. Like, like I said, I'm going to part of the corporate papers is going to be, I'm going to include the hire car course and I'm going to give you comprehensive in-depth knowledge of how to start renting a car out on the platform starting with one car. I recommend that you start with one car. Uh, I understand that everyone can't do what I did. I mean, most of America cannot spend $300,000 starting a car rental business in three months. You know, most Americans can't do that. So essentially the course will be geared for those of you who want to start with one car and I give you a methodology on how you can manage your money. I'm going to give you the whole game and everything and everything you need to do. And that's part of the corporate package. And for folks who just want to do that, I'll probably start on that like next week. Cause you know, like I said today, my intention was to get up and do some training, but because tow truck drivers were not showing up, I had to go over there and uh, thanks for all the comments. Because if I had been thinking, I would have thought about, you know, put the, you know, tow truck near certain things. But once again, some days I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And, you know, even with that, I still think I would have had to been there because essentially I had to help the tow truck driver get the car on the back because literally the wheel was just hanging on by a few parts. It was literally hanging on. And when we put it on the truck, it kind of messed up the fender a little bit. Not terrible, but it, it is noticeable. And I had to be in the car and I had to hold the steering wheel because the wheel was going all over the place. So, you know, it, it, it's just more stuff that's learned. But if you're thinking about renting cars on Toro or hire car, think putting your best cars on there that you can. Because like I've seen in the comments, Corollas and this and this and this. And the average price for renting a car on hire car is $35 to $42. I'm renting cars on hire car for 49, 50, 60, and 70, and $125. And I'm probably gonna have to bring the price of the X5 down. I may get rid of that. Uh, I'm in a position where I can get rid of that and not take a hit because honestly, after the animals trashed it, I'm just, it's just kind of bugging me because when you ride it, it's got this little creek and, you know, um, I paid 18,000 for that with the repair that was 20,000 and I made 2000 off of it. So I can probably trade that for 15. I don't know. I don't know. Cause I got the GPS kill switch in it and I may just lower the price and rent it out and ride it out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But this is the thoughts of starting the car rental business. Like once again, if you're thinking about you got a little Rudy poop car and you want to just throw it on a hire car, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people who've done that. And I consistently look at the hire car listings and their cars just sit. They just sit. Whereas I have people stalking me. 
I have people every day ask me, hey, do you have any cars? You got the BMWs back? You got the BMWs? Every day, I wake up to those messages in my inbox every day. So you can go ahead and put some Rudy Poot stuff on hire car, and it may work out for you depending on where you are in the country. Or you can go ahead and put the best car you can on hire car because hire car is a relatively young company and they're growing and they're going through some growing pains. But I feel in the future that you will be able to rent a car for 300 bucks a day on hire car because what's going to happen is with this rental car shortage, a lot of people are going to be looking at the other alternatives and I, I, I guarantee it. Like I'm renting cars for 125 bucks a day on hire car. There are many of you on Toro who can't get that for whatever you got. You can't get it. You can't get it. So once again, uh, the links below, my affiliate link is below, and I'm going to put the course link below as well. So you guys, and I'll probably create the payment plan for you guys who want to do hire car or Toro, and it'd be a comprehensive course. But like I said, give me some time, because like I said, um, like I filmed this video in my car and because my iPhone is messing up, you know, one video, it, it, I don't know why it's doing that, but when I was playing the video back, it just at the 12 minute mark, it just froze and it didn't even play anymore. So I got to figure that out. I think I didn't do it on this phone. I did it on my smaller phone and that's where I'm consistently having the issue. So I'm going to try to do videos on this phone. And if I keep having those issues on the other phone, I'm just going to sell it and get me another bigger iPhone. But that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.